Game one is in the books. And it was a blowout. It was a pretty much all game throughout blowout, despite the Mavs' best efforts to cut the lead to. What, what did it get to? Six or s eight? Uh, I'm pretty sure it was eight. Uh, after being down by almost as much as 30 points, the Mavericks did come back into the game and made it an eight point game, but the Celtics responded. It was Jalen Brown in the third quarter with his defensive plays and uh, intensity. I thought he got to the line incredibly well. Uh, and I thought that won Boston the game in that third quarter where they shifted the momentum back to themselves, got the crowd back into it, especially Jalen Brown with some of those blocks. And then they just cruised home with a victory. And yeah, it was a fairly uncompet uncompetitive series. series Game series, hopefully, uh, will be competitive. Uh, got some real, you know, series comparisons that I can think of. I would not be surprised if this is similar to the Bucks Sun series, where the Suns take a 2 0 lead and then the Mavs win all four games, or if this is similar to the Mavs Sun series, where there were just blowouts, nothing but blowouts in the first, in all games essentially, right? Uh, but uh, obviously, Dallas won game seven despite every you know other game being won by the home team. So we'll see. Uh, you know, with Porzing is back and looking like he did, uh, even though he came off the bench and in limited minutes, uh, it gives you way more confidence in the Celtics, which it's understood. But I'm not gonna count the Mavs out. I'm still gonna stick with them in a six. But obviously, I wouldn't be surprised if the Celtics won easily, even right, because they have this much of talent and they have just an incredible talent but obviously the Mavs have uh, the best player in the series uh, and they don't have you know little talent themselves but uh, the difference in talent showed up today of, of for sure um, and what I want to point out first what I want to point out first the defense of the Mavs right uh, they still allowed 107 points which is not bad but they scored just 89 uh, offensively, I don't know, you know, the lobs weren't there and the passes weren't as crisp for those lobs when they were there, which was not great. Obviously, Kyrie struggling, uh, how what was he? Six of 19 from the field doesn't help you, right? If it's a good Kyrie game, which he had a lot of good looks in this game, uh, it might be a close game, which might mean a different outcome, but Kyrie just simply didn't show up at all offensively today. And that was just, uh, too much to overcome for this for these maths, right? Uh, if your second best player is not gonna show up and not gonna score well, uh, it's, it's it was just a losing battle, right? Much like Minnesota, even though obviously they made it closer because um, everyone else there was involved. Uh, if Ant and Cat weren't gonna show up, you had no chance of beating Luca and Kyrie. If you know, obviously Luca and Kyrie show up. Uh, but this Celtics team is a whole different animal, right? He's a whole different beast. He's gonna fuck him up. Shout out to Keita. Um, but yeah, obviously, Porzingis, the matchup nightmare he is, he posted up a lot of players on the Mavs, right? When they switched onto him, that was a tough time for the Mavs players. He was hitting every jumper, it felt like. Um, and the rim protection was really good for him. Nothing easy for the Mavs, besides Luka, at the rim. Um, and... And... Uh, the switching, uh, I thought Luca defensively had a bad off-ball game uh, where he miscommunicated a lot. He missed a lot of switches, which led to really good looks for the Celtics. They shot 16 of 42 from the three-point line, and a lot of them were just really great looks. Won the three-point battle really easily. And a lot of it was just some late rotations from Luca, uh, some uh, overall just bad rotations on defense, which, uh, you know, once they couldn't guard the point of attack defense they were left to scramble 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 and in those pick and rolls pick and pops they were scrambling and switching and trying to obviously run to the shooters and it was way harder when luca wasn't all the way engaged defensively of the ball and yeah the celtics got great looks and to be fair uh i thought the mavs you know defensively their biggest strength has been the rebounding and the paint protection right i thought they have given up some really good looks uh, throughout the previous series, but the difference was right, the youth of OKC and a lot of it was just 
unproven shooters like Jason Wallace, Lou Dort, Josh Giddy, uh, and all the other players on OKC. Uh, for the T Wolves, it was Cat who just couldn't shoot the fucking ball there. They had also Rudy Gobert, who is not an offensive threat, right? While the Celtics just have an offensive and a three point shooting threat. Literally everyone on the court is a three point shooting threat. Uh, or at least everyone that played, you know, rotational minutes, which is Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Al Horford, Derek White, Drew Holiday, Porzingis, and Sam Hauser. All of them are really good to great shooters. <laughs> and you just can't do it without, you know, with Ru you know, Rudy, you could do, you know, get away with a lot more, but these guys will punish you way better. And they put Luca in way more overall uh, defensive actions, which I thought he held up one-on-one -on -one really well, but unfortunately, defense is not just one-on-one -on -one for him. Uh, and that's tough, that's, that's just tough. Uh, and they obviously lost the rebounding battle, which wasn't as big of a deficit, but Early on, they were getting crushed, out uh, hustled, and just out rebounded, especially on the offensive end, which was not great. Uh, they obviously lost a three point shooting battle, and then they won the turnover battle between the stars. Tatum had a really bad turnover game, even though overall he did his job, right? Rebounding once again, sensational. Uh, some good playmaking, but it was not great with the turnovers, and he hit some timely shots at least, uh, even though it was a really cruise game for Tatum. Um, but he did his part, right? He did his part, while obviously uh, it came easier for them. Um, and yeah, they won the turnover battle between the stars by one just because Luca had four, Kyrie had three, and two of Lucas were for a bucket, right? Kyrie also gave up one for an easy transition basket, uh, which is not nice. And the Mavs overall weren't able to get to tra the transition that much. Uh, but, well, you know, Luca. Wasn't as efficient as you would like him to be, but he still lit them up. The problem was that he had just one assist. Um, they took away the passing from him really well. Like I said, the lobes weren't there. They forced him into more shots. And some of it was just misses, right? He created some really good looks for Kyrie, some really good looks for PJ Washington on the three-point line. Uh, and he just couldn't, they just couldn't knock them down. Uh, and that's gonna have to change. Maxi Kleber has to be a little more you know, of an offensive threat and a rebound better if he wants to play in this series. Josh Green has to be a better offensive threat. But, I mean, him and Derek Jones Jr. couldn't finish anything around the rim with uh, Al Horford and Porzingis in there. And, I mean, obviously, Tatum is around there. Jalen Brown, obviously, at the rim was sensational defensively today. So, that's tough. That's just tough. Uh, and, obviously, we know that the three-point battle, offensive rebounding, and the turnovers uh, are the most important things in this series. And the Celtics essentially won all of it, in a way, obviously. They won the three-point battle so badly that it didn't matter that they lost the turnover battle by, like, one. Um, um, and if Tatum is hitting contested three, I think the Dallas has no chance, honestly. Uh, we'll see how the effort looks next time. Can they do the switching better? Obviously, they can. Uh, the communication wasn't as sharp. Lucas' effort, like I said, wasn't as sharp, they, which they should see on the film and improve. Um, and... Yeah, what else is there to talk about? Yeah, the Celtics ring does not count, obviously. <laughs> um, I mean, just an incredible team wide effort, right? Derek White was sensational all around. Al Horford sensational minutes all around. Jason Tatum, despite still, like, he was the he was their worst player in my opinion today. Um, and that doesn't mean he was bad. He wasn't bad, right? But he was probably their worst player, in my opinion, even though the counting stats doesn't say it. The turnovers were bad. He was not engaged. Uh, pretty much all his points came when the game was over or when they were up by 20. And uh, I, 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 I'm not trying to hate on him. I, I'm starting to like you know, I'm, I'm starting to, you know, disassociate him from the Celtics logo. But uh, Still, as a player, he just leaves a lot to be desired, but also he plays his role incredibly well, right? So uh, that's why the Celtics have this, this type of a team where everyone can be a star on a given night. Um, and Jalen Brown, defensive play, sensational. Attacking the Rams, sensational. Uh, even though they did get a little too much at Luka, in my opinion. But, I mean, at the end of the day, maybe it's still worth it to try to make him work as much as possible defensively, even if you overdo it, because at least he might be a little more tired uh, down the stretch, right? Uh, 
Drew Holiday, some really timely plays once again. And Porzingis obviously off the bench with an insane performance, incredible shooting from him, uh, mismatch abusement, rim protection, everything. Um, and uh, for the Mavs, the picks, Daniel Gafford, Derek Lively have to be better. Uh, Gafford was essentially yet 8 and 3, but felt like he was a non impact all game. Lively, uh, really bad foul game, just couldn't find anything himself. And the Celtics also did a really good job taking them away, though. don't get me wrong, right? But they need to play better. Maxi Kleber has to be better. The big, the bigs have to be better. Uh, Derek Jones obviously would love more finishing from him. But like every single role player can be better. It's in Boston. You get it. We'll see what happens in Dallas and in Game 2, right? That's where you start a little bit panicking for Dallas. But Game 3 is the pivotal game for them anyway if they lose Game 2. Um, uh, PJ Washington really good. He just needs the three wall to fall. And... Obviously, Kyrie, right? The Kyrie and the Bigs have to be better. Kyrie was just awful today. Uh, bad turnovers, um, bad shot selection, couldn't hit his open shots. Just a really, a really rough night offensively for Kyrie. And Luka has to be better off-ball defensively. And the Mavs obviously have a chance still, even though this Boston team is just incredible. Like, what, what can you, you know, say? What can you say? Um, yeah, that's, that's it. Um... That's my game one, one uh, talk, game one assessment, however you want to call it. Um, yeah, it was a lot of disappointing game one because obviously Celtic haters such as I don't want to see them win, but it makes sense, right? Uh, it was an incredible first quarter, incredible shooting performance from them. Um, yeah, I mean, they, they were incredible, especially in that first quarter, which essentially ended the game anyway, even if the Mavs made it closer for a bit. Uh, that was just essentially knockout punch in the first round. <laughs> we'll see what happens in game two, though. Uh, it's on Sunday, which means on Monday I'll be here with a video. In the meantime, I might talk about the Lakers head coach. I'll be releasing my series preview for this series because I couldn't get to it yesterday. I did record it, but I just didn't have time to release it, so I'm going to release it tomorrow. Uh, the, my points are still the same, right? So it doesn't matter if I release it after game one. It's stupid on my part, but it is what it is at the end of the day. And yeah, I'll catch you all on Sunday. Sorry for a little bit of a uh, weird uh, attitude. I just, you know, the anxiety for me and uh, such is life sometimes, I guess. You know, uh, still trying to come to gripes with a lot of shit that I don't agree with and that you just have to compromise for. Um, but yeah, that was a downer. <laughs> that was a downer. Thank you all for listening. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you for game two on Monday. Uh, be kind to yourself and to others. Try to stand on your morals. And yeah, all love, baby.